On the request of some of the viewers, I have recorded this video on anthocyros. Today let us discuss about the external morphology of anthocyros. Anthocyros belongs to the class Anthocyrotopsida, order Anthocyrotales and family Anthocyrotaceae. Anthocyros is represented by about 200 species. It is largest and widely distributed genus. The plant is seen growing both in tropical and temperate regions. It grows in moist, shady places. On the river banks. and the rock crevices. The species of anthocyros may be annuals like anthocyros erectus and Anthocyros punctatus. Some of the species of anthocyros are perennials. The examples of perennial species are Anthocyros fusiformis. and Anthocyros himalayensis. In India, the genus is represented by about 25 species. Some of the species which are seen in India are Anthocyros Erectus, Anthocyros crispulus, Anthocyros condalensis, Anthocyros dikshiti. These are some of the species seen growing in India. The plant body is a gametophyte. The external structure of the plant. The plant is a simple thallus which is not differentiated into root-like, leaf-like or stem-like structures. It is dark green dorsi ventral and prostrate. We see the structure of anthocyros thallus. It is suborbicular and lobed structure, which is dorsi ventrally flattened, multicellular in the center, and towards the periphery, it is 
few cells in its thickness. That is why the central region of anthocerous thallus appears to be thick. The dorsal surface is dark green in color and it is the thallus is prostrate in its nature. The dorsal surface of the thallus has different textures in different species of anthocerous. For example, in anthocerous leaves, the dorsal surface is smooth. In anthocerous crispulus, the dorsal surface is velvety to touch. In anthocerous fusiformis, the surface is rough. When we turn the thallus to the ventral surface, on the ventral side, the thallus shows the presence of unicellular thin walled or smooth walled rhizoids along the median line. These rhizoids are filled with granular material. Tuberculated rhizoids and scales are absent. We have seen the presence of tuberculated rhizoids and scales in Marchensia. In Anthocerous, both tuberculated scales and rhizoids are absent. The mature thallus shows on the dorsal surface, it shows the presence of erect, cylindrical, elongated structures. These are the sporophytes. Or the sporophyte develops from the dorsal surface of the thallus. The internal structure of the thallus of anthocerous is simple without any cellular differentiation all the cells are similar in structure. The outer layer is the epidermis. The epidermis is made up of small cells which are distinct from the other cells of the thallus. We find the cells of epidermal layer both on the upper and the lower surface of the thallus. These cells are distinct, continuous and are smaller in size. Below the epidermis is the thallus which is composed of thin walled parenchymatous cells. These cells are compactly arranged without any intercellular spaces. All the cells are similar in structure and contain one or more discoid or oval shaped chloroplasts. The chloroplasts of anthocerous contain pyrenoids. This is a characteristic feature of the class Anthocytopsida. The thickness of the thallus in the middle is different in different species. 
in Antasiros Levis, the thallus is 8 to 6, 6 to 8 cells in its thickness in the center. Whereas in Anthocyros punctatus, the thickness is around 8 to 10 cells. In Anthocyros crispulus, the thallus in the center is very thick and shows around 30 to 40 cells. There are no air spaces or air chambers which were seen in the thallus of Marcantia. Instead of that, there are intercellular mucilaginous cavities which open to the outside on the ventral surface. Through a narrow slit like structure, which is called as the slime pore. These pores are formed by partial separation, that is, the epidermal cells partially separate and they create a slit like opening through which these mucilaginous chambers open to outside. The mucilaginous cavities are invaded by colonies of nostoc. Nostoc is a blue-green algae. These blue-green algae invade the mucilaginous cavities and they remain there. But there is no symbiotic association between the uh, nostoc and the thallus of anthocyros. Anthocyros thallus can grow even in the absence of nostoc colonies. From the lower epidermis, we can see unicellular smooth walled rhizoids growing. The rhizoids help the thallus to fix to the substratum and conduction of water. The thallus grows by means of apical cells. <laughs> 